This episode of The Citadel Cafe is brought to you by listeners like you. Visit patreon.com slash the Citadel Cafe to find out how you can become a patron and help make this show possible. This is the Citadel Cafe, episode number 319 for Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019. My name is Joel Duggan, and the Citadel Cafe is where my friends and I hang out to talk about the geeky stuff that we are into. Back again is Miss Megan Townsend. You can find her at oh Megan Townsend on all the social media that matters. Hello. Hi. How are uh, you? I'm doing fantastic. I've had a, a great week. Uh, I've had some pretty epic events happen online. Uh, and I want to start the show off on a positive note because I've got, I've got a funny feeling <laughs> after uh, after a little pre-show banter with you that when we do start talking about Game of Thrones, uh, the, the, the grumpy might be hitting the fan yeah. <laughs> at some point. Uh, I've been trying really hard to to have a balanced opinion, and I just don't think I can do it. So we're mm-hmm. gonna we're gonna get in, we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Uh, but first, I want to um, thank my friend Pixel Riffs, uh, Johnny, who I do the Spawn Chunks podcast with. Uh, because I was doing a stream uh, the other day on Twitch. I was streaming some Minecraft. I was actually a double stream. I was streaming with Fixit412, who is a member of the Realm of Vastin server that I play on. And Johnny sent a raid, uh, which is when he dumps all of the people that were watching his stream into mine. It was 500 people. <laughs> That's amazing. It was nuts. Uh, so many people were following and saying hello and chiming in that I could not keep up. Uh, I kind of had to do like a blanket thank you to like everybody in the chat. And it's like, guys, thank you. This is amazing. Because the follow noises in my ear were just like every 60 seconds. It was just like ding. They're not 60 seconds. Like once every second. It was like ding, ding. Ding. It was mm. it was really cool. And now a lot of people couldn't stay because they had already been hanging out with Johnny on stream for like two hours or three hours or something like that. So they were kind of done, but they, they said that they would be back. So it was really cool. And I ended up keeping, I think, uh, about 120 or so people were still in the chat when I ended the stream, uh, which is a stream high for me. So that's the first time I've had that many people like stick around for the duration of, of the broadcast. Uh, so it was a couple of milestones. It was like the most at one time. It was the most sustained viewers, uh, largest raid, like there was all kinds of things. Twitch and the dashboard afterwards had tell, told me like, hey, these are all the different things that you just hit, like uh, achievements unlocked sort of idea. Uh, and it was really, really fun. And uh, I wanted to again, thank thank Johnny for the raid and and just to the, all the people that were there, if you happen to, to listen to this show as well, because uh, we were talking about it in the chat, uh, just thank you. It was just, it was a lot of fun. I, I kind of wish I was, was able to be more engaging on the stream, but Fix It was on the stream with me so he and i were talking and so i found it very challenging to talk to fix it and try to read the chat room at the same time like yeah it was, i bet it was really really hard um i've done i've done some live podcasting with live chat rooms and it's okay but it has to be the right kind of show like if you're not a mm-hmm. show that constantly looks for engagement from the chat room and use that in the context of the podcast then you're just going to be distracted. Like you're trying to listen to your co-host make a point while you read the chat room looking for something to contribute. Like I just, I, I find it very challenging. And so I, one ends up losing out. Either I don't look at the chat room as much or I'm not listening to the co-host as much. And one I feel is, is not polite. So I try, I yeah. try to focus on that. Um, but anyway, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and I want to point people towards Fix It. Uh, and that is youtube.com slash fixit412. That's F-I-X-X-I-T-T-412. Uh, he is, we'll say the helmsman of the realm of Vastin server. And uh, his stream would likely be on YouTube. So you'd also be able to see what we were doing from his perspective as well, which was really cool. Uh, he took That's me neat. On. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. We worked on the giant frost tree build that I was building over there. Uh, the season on the realm of Vastin and we started filling it in like we've we've I've made the kind of the bones of it and now we're kind of filling in the bottom and we we spent the entire stream and we only got like the bottom chunk of it done <laughs> like, oh really like out of like 14 rings of tree we got one finished <laughs> like it was and it's not wow. even finished it was like partially finished but uh but it's a fun chill thing to do I'm looking to do more of it because 
uh, it's not a lot of thinking about what I'm doing. I'm just placing the same block over and over again. We're just filling it in with like a, a birch texture, which on the texture pack on that server is a different different color. It's gray. Uh, okay. But it what it means is that it's it's very easy. When once fix it took off, he had to go get his kids. Well, once I was alone on the stream, it was very easy to talk with the chat and do what I was doing because I wasn't like trying to invent the build. Like I was basically coloring. It's like paint by number, right? So you just like mm -hmm. fill fill in this spot here with all wood. Okay. <laughs> and so it was just doing that and then talking with the chat and just, you know, chilling out and stuff like that. But again, it was it was a super, super fun time and it was uh it was a fun highlight of of me being a fairly new streamer because of I've not been doing this seriously for more than six months, maybe eight months. So um to hit those kind of yep. numbers and, and have that kind of positive feedback from people was just really cool. It was an excellent way to start the week. That's good. Yeah, have you ever done I had, I streaming? Get... I know that you do. I... I know that you do YouTube videos, but they're all edited. Yeah, I haven't. I wanted to try streaming. A couple of my friends do streaming actually. My friend um, Vanessa does streaming. She's um, uh, what's her name on Luxurious Lady on Twitch, and she does a lot of uh, like randomizers. So she'll, she was doing Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, but with a randomizer. So every time you went to the world map or every time you left a level, you would be taken to a random place that may not fit the same pattern that the original game would have. So you have to ha really know the game to do it. So it's very complicated. But mm -hmm. um, So she's crazy fun to watch. And my friend Kyle yeah. does a lot of random games. He's done a variety of stuff. I believe his fiance Becca, streams as well, but I actually don't know her Twitch name. Um, She's she's she kind of more does it for fun. I think Kyle is Kyle is a you know an affiliate now. Is that what it is? Yep, I'm a, I'm an affiliate yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember yeah. the exact criteria, but so yeah. There's, so like, there's, I, I, there's, I'm not sure of the tiers. Like, what are what are the tiers for it? It's there's like a start... base streamer. I think yeah. I don't remember what that's called. And then there's affiliate is the next level, and which is a broad level. And then partner is the one where you have to have like a hundred consistent viewers every time you stream for a month you have to have x amount of followers and right. and there's a certain amount of you also have to have a number of people actually chatting like even if a hundred people showed up and watched but didn't say anything that's not enough like you have to actually have uh, some engagement and you also have to stream x amount of hours in 30 days consistently so like there's a certain criteria well for example uh johnny uh, pixel riffs is mm -hmm. applying for partner he's been trying to apply for partner for now for a couple of months but the the problem is that it's it, there's a bottleneck where the applications are just not getting processed either properly or fast enough or whatever and and johnny has not been able to get any information outside of the other day where he said that he's he submitted an application and he received confirmation that the application was received which he did not even get before um, okay well that's good yeah but he more than meets the criteria you're right. right. Yeah. So, but I think it's just a matter of like, there's just so many people out there throwing their spaghetti noodle at the wall, trying to be a mm -hmm. streamer. Uh, and I'm not poo pooing it. It's a lot of fun and it's, it's provided me with a fantastic community. And it's, it's kind of, it's a nice compliment to podcasting, to Minecraft with the, the Spawn Chunks podcast. Like, there's a lot of really positive things that come out of it. But I can yeah. understand, like, like, would I want to work at Twitch in a capacity where I'd be, you know, dealing with who gets to be partner and who not, who doesn't? Nope, not in a million no, years. Yeah, like that, that, that would be the data must be out of this world. Like, it just it must yeah. be so hard um, to sort through. And I feel like while it's super super slow, I feel like the fact that they're going through people is probably good because the opposite of true is of uh, is true of YouTube uh, and YouTube is seeing some major um, flaws being pointed out in their like copyright system yeah. and all that yep. kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I heard about that with Alistair and I were actually talking about that um, with, uh, was, was it Pixel Riffs? No, no it was Mumbo, Mumbo Jumbo. Mumbo, it was Mumbo. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's broken. Yeah. Holy crap. We were watching a couple of videos. We were hanging out the other day at his place and uh, we're watching some videos on like the Minecraft, not the Minecraft, sorry, <laughs> Minecraft in the brain, the YouTube um, copyright system and how like YouTuber, like unfortunately I'm not big enough to have this problem yet, but I'm kind of afraid for when it, if it ever happens, because yeah. if someone decides, oh, hey, I want to copyright this claim, even though it's like a, like a creative commons piece, mm -hmm. and even if you pay for a license for something, like I know there's another guy 
um, I, I don't really follow him for anything, but it's a video that came up on my feed um, as like suggested and like, you know, I, my whole channel was copywritten or my whole channel was copyright claimed and it was this one company that claimed the song that he bought a license to from this artist directly and his artist was like, yeah, I get in touch with my management. Management gave him a license that he paid 50 bucks for for infinite use of the song uh, and this one company kept trying to claim it um, because it was on their website as well. So the website kept trying to claim it, even mm. though he had a license. Yeah. Uh, and it was just a, a, a mess. And it's there's no way for for content creators if they if they dispute the claim, if the if the person making the claim says no, I'm still going to make this claim that you're copywriting something, you get a copyright strike in your channel. And you only get three of those before your whole channel is gone, done so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's no there's no middleman. There's no median. Like YouTube is not acting as a median. The only person who gets to make the decision of yes or no, this is copyright claimed, is the person who's making the claim. Yeah. Even if it's a false claim. And there's no system in place for false claims to be penalized. Yeah. Oh, which yeah. is a problem. That's yeah. a huge problem. Well, and it's and it's also it's also um, opportunistic. Like yes. Mumbo Jumbo has got three plus million followers. Yeah. He's been using the same intro song for as long as I've been following him, which is at least three years. Yeah. Right. And, but now that he's at this 3 million point there, this company is claiming. And the thing is like, it's not even that they're claiming the song. The song he used has a sample and the artist that he got the song from it's used just the a sample, sample and the sample in the four second clip, which I'm not even sure how long the sample is within that four seconds, uh, is what this copyright company is, or this company is claiming copyright on. Like it is, it's a pure, someone sent an algorithm out looking for this bit of music that they own. And I'm sure, you know, and this is anecdotal. I don't know. I'm being a little bit defensive, um, that the, they, they're not looking for all uses of this sample. They're looking for who's using this sample that has more than 2 million followers. Yeah. Right. Like they, who who's making the most money? Who can we, because while they're making this claim, the money's in limbo and, and if they win, then they get. I thought the money was going directly to the, to them, to no, whoever made the copyright no. claim. Well, I was watching one of Mumbo's videos and he said that during the dispute, uh, during the dispute, the money is not sent anywhere. It's an escrow, um, which is still problematic. This is the, this is the guy's living. Like this is, right. it's, it's like your paycheck being on hold, you know, like if yeah. this, if this yeah. you know, and they have, they have the power as a large company that is auto flagging 400, 600, 800 videos of his, um, where he can't keep up. Plus, like you said, he doesn't want to jump on the gun. I really hope at this point that he's lawyered up. Like I, I really hope at some point that he's contacted a legal, you know, yeah. representative to get some advice on how to proceed. Um, because the, um, the company is just they're, they're It's an automated system. It's not that there's somebody on the other end in front of a computer making these claims. It's a program. Like yeah. on a Sunday morning, he had something like 400 claims in like a couple of hours. Like that's not that's a human. So you know, wild. Like it's just, it's just, but it's the thing like they're just looking at him like, well, here, here, here's how we can uh, potentially make some money. You know, it's like, how can we, you know, with no regard for the person's livelihood, not to mention that even if, uh, he's using he, he's using this clip like it's not it should it the person that should be being under scrutiny is the person that sold it right yeah so it's like the the person it's the artist that made the song if they didn't have permission to use the sample then they shouldn't have used the sample they're the one that's at fault you know like it's yes it's while yes, you know, it's do more due diligence, you know, on YouTubers and people that are content creators that are looking for music. Um, I use royalty free music. I use the same royalty free music that a lot of other people use. It's a little overused. Um, uh, Icom tech, we, uh, Kevin McLeod is, we always credit him at the end of the show, but that's yeah. the agreement. He's like, use it for free. Put my link at the end of your thing and, and say it on, you know, and use it. You know, I don't think even in my, um, in, in the user agreement that I have to say it on the podcast, I do it because I'm an artist and I want to. Yeah. Um, but the agreement is that this particular link and the legal language and the sharing license has to be linked 
uh, on the show notes. And so I do that. Like, you know, there's a, at the bottom of every Citadel Cafe, there's always like a music composed by Kevin McLeod. There's a link to his website and, and all the copyright information is there. Mm -hmm. uh, same with my, because um, I actually, I use the same intro music or versions of the intro music, different portions of it uh, for the Citadel uh, Minecraft series that I put on YouTube. And same idea. If you scroll all the way to the bottom of my notes on, or my, um, what's it called? The description. description underneath, box, under, yeah. underneath the YouTube video. The very bottom, it's like intro and it gives the title of the piece and the link to the license. And then it's by Kevin McLeod. And then underneath that is the outro piece. Same idea. It's a different song, but it's still Kevin McLeod. And here's the link and here's the thing. So if people, the, the idea is that if people want to go and listen to his music, then they can go do that. Uh, and then, you know, and he has stuff that you can buy from him too. So that's just his way of advertising. He's like, here's a bunch of free music that I'm going to make anyway. So you use it. But if you use it, you have to point people back to my website. You know, like it's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's, well, it's, it's, it's a way, it's the way that uh, a podcast works too. Uh, like all the podcasts that are out there are, um, or not all of them, but like the way that I release my podcast is this creative commons. Like if you, you can't grab it and broadcast it and pretend like it's yours, but if you want to talk about it, if you want to use a clip of it in, in context or review, or, um, if you want to, um, make fun of it, like if someone clipped you and I, you know, ranting about Game of Thrones and turned it into a song. Like yeah, that's, that's, I, first, like, please, someone, please do that. That'd be right. right? Uh, but I'd that, be like, so into that. Yeah, but but that's I mean that's fair use, right? Like you're creating yeah. something new out of something that that was just not our intention, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Uh, whereas if we made a song and someone took that song into made it into another song, then, then you're then you're having a bit of a problem, you know? Yeah. Um, like I've I've had some people um, very politely ask me about using some of my artwork, you know, on like. Um, web pages and stuff like that and I always say no politely and I always say thank you thank you thank you so much for writing and asking you know because that that's, yeah, that's yeah. it's so important that you know that you have to do that and so that's awesome and I usually say like hey if you want me to commission something like I mean I can draw something original for you that you own and that like it's not mine it's 100% yours and sometimes that that conversation doesn't work out because they either don't have the budget or, or whatever mm. um, but uh, but so other times it does. Other times people are like, yeah, okay, no, that makes sense. The only thing that's a little bit foggy and I still don't know actually how to approach it uh, is is people that um, want to get tattoos of my work. And that's happened at least twice now, if not three times. Hmm. Uh, two people asked, one person didn't. The person, oh. and, and yeah. And, and so here's, and here's, here's the fun kind of like, well, you get what you get. The person that didn't ask got a shitty tattoo <laughs> like it it's, oh, yeah, it's it doesn't look good it's my artwork but it looks terrible and so i and but the problem there is that i then have to say like hey could you uh untag me uh because the, the the conversation in the in the post was made it sound like provided by joel duggan's like no 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 no, no. stolen by you from joel duggan i didn't give you that and it's a terrible terrible representation or um, reproduction of my work. So take my name off this. Like, this is garbage. Mm. You know, I didn't say that. I'm saying that to you now because um, I'm sure that they don't listen. Um, <laughs> but but in other cases, I, I had, uh, I, gosh, I can't remember her name. I want to say it was Helen, um, but she's in Switzerland or Sweden or something. And she commissioned me. She got an original work that she got tattooed and it looks beautiful. I shared it on yeah. Instagram a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 Deadpool riding a, a unicorn, I think. Uh, or no, he's hugging, he's hugging a stuffed unicorn. Um, and and she she got that tattooed and it looks wonderful. She had a very talented tattoo artist, um, but she, you know, she paid me professionally to draw it for her. Um, yeah. And then somebody else uh, wrote me and asked me if it was possible to do it, uh, like to use the art. And I tried to pitch them on getting a commission and they said, no, I just, you know, I want to do this one. And at that point, I kind of have to say like, well, like I don't necessarily say this, but I have to think to myself, there's nothing I can do to stop them. Right. Yeah. Like they're just, they're going to be able to take this off. And if the, if the tattoo artist is willing to copy it, especially if it's like, I mean, not to stereotype, but like a lot of times the emails that come in that they want, they want to just use an image off of like art station for a tattoo it's mm -hmm. usually from somewhere else, like um, Asia or South America or Europe. Or just, it's usually another country, like non-North America. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I have got no way of telling whether this this thing is ever used or not. But usually at that point, if they're like, no, I just, I would really like to use this particular, um, this particular piece. 
And I said, well, you know, if you want to use it, then I mean, like I can't really stop you, but um, here's, you know, and sometimes I might even say like, look, here's a link to a high res version and, you know, don't change it. You know, like I, yeah. you know, it's, it's, just, it's, it's like when people do get like lewd tattoos of Mickey Mouse, it's, it's like, there's nothing Disney can really do, but it's just yeah. such, it's such a, a, a bad, like it's, it's such a bad thing in my opinion that I just try to talk people out of it by saying like, look, you, I'll say, look, look, you can use this, but don't, don't change it. Or at least, you know, like here's a high res version. So your, so your tattoo artist is not looking at a like a, a an image on a screen trying to figure out what line goes where i can actually send you something where they could if they wanted to they could just co photocopy it or something you know like mm -hmm. if, if you're going to use it at least make it look good and um and i think the other thing i i did was was like you know at least give me the option to be tagged and promoted in a post it's like so if you're going to steal it then at least put my name somewhere so that people can come and get directed by me it's it's such a hard conversation i usually in, in a lot of cases, more and more lately, I've been saying no. I've just been saying like, no, you want that for free? Then no, you can't use it. Again, yeah. I can't stop them. If they go ahead and do it and don't tell me, then sure. Um, that That is what it is. Like, it's not like I can tell them to go get it removed. <laughs> like, it's just, right. You know, like it's just, once it's done, it's done. Um, but it's just, it's, it's, I usually take the opportunity to then just like, don't try to educate people down the line. Be like, actually... You know, I'm, I'm surprised that more as popular as tattooing has become, and I see it more and more and more. Um, I'm surprised that more tattoo artists don't refuse, won't be less like, well, a lot of them do actually, at oh, least a lot know? of the local ones here. I did a lot of research before. I mean, I got, I, you know, one of my tattoos is one that I found online, but I, I was scared. Like I, I found, um, the, one of my forearm, I think you've seen it before. It's like a little crescent moon thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yep. Uh, and so she said that was like, it was a blog, a Tumblr blog that I found. And she was like, I'm making these for free to put out into the world anyway. If you want to tattoo them, go for it. I'd love to see them. So she just kind of gave that permission. I was oh, like, yeah. great, cool, nice. Uh, so I got that one tattooed anyway. I was like, sweet. Um, but I did a lot of research before I got a tattoo. And a lot of artists don't like, a lot of artists will not copy another artist's work. Mm. And a lot of artists will prefer to, you can bring an in inspiration, you can bring in a photo for inspiration, but if an artist is like a good artist uh, or, or someone who has a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for, respect for other artists, they will not carbon copy someone else's work on, on your body. They will, mm. they're like, okay, great. This is a great starting point let's come up with a draft together and they'll do like a, a mock-up for you. Um, and honestly, it's better that way. A lot of the time an artist will know what will can translate better to the skin. First of all, because mm -hmm. um, they've been doing it for years. Hopefully they've been doing it for years, but a lot of like even, um, you know, assistant or, or, uh, Oh God, what's um, English is really hard for me today. What's that word? Um, <laughs> uh... I'm I'm thinking I, I'm having a brain fart and I'm remembering that Sonia might have been the name of the client and I I've got okay. a funny feeling the way that she talked about her tattoo artist I feel like she might have even spoken to her tattoo artist first I mean it's like hey I really like this guy's art if I get him to do a commission will you tattoo it on me like I, the, it seemed like there was this symbiotic yeah. relationship like she yeah kind of, that's that that's sounds like a good conversation to make sure that's okay going into an artist and being like i want this on me it's like well uh well did you check with the other artist and no we don't really do that and um i know there's one girl locally named helena helena darling and she will not tattoo anyone else's work hmm. she just refuses flat out and that's like yeah. one of her main things she's like i will not because it's a disrespect it's a disservice to the other artist unless you got it expressly um commissioned for it hmm even then she's a little wary of it because it's not her work right and mm -hmm. like a lot of tattoo artists for them it is art it's like the same way that you make art and put it in a digital format her art is a physical canvas so like a, like a human canvas and she wants to make sure that it's her her design and her art and she's very good she's very very good at it um some artists are a bit more relaxed but it's that's a, a conversation you have to have actually about tattoos and finding tattoos and speaking with your artists it's old and it's crappy please don't judge me i was just getting used to doing videos 
Um, <laughs> a lot of the, I actually got a comment recently. So like, this was actually really helpful. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that people are finding it and looking into it because um, I, I did like step-by-step, step, like here's all the research that I did. I reached the hell out of artists. Like it's to the point now with my two tiny little tattoos, if someone walks in with a Helena Darling piece, I know it's a Helena Darling piece because I've done a lot of research on her. Oh, I've done cool. a lot of research on a lot of the other artists in the city. So I can usually pinpoint, oh, that's so-and-so from this shop and that's so-and-so from this shop. Sometimes I'm not sure and some people take on a really similar style or they tattoo in a particular style that's very similar to another artist. And I'm just like, who did that for you? And then I'm like, okay, I, I was just, it was either one of those two people and I'm was one of them so i'm usually not wrong i mm. i don't know how i'm able to keep that information in my brain but I am. <laughs> that's um, funny moving on to the main discussion this week uh we are going to talk about game of thrones a moment of silence for game of thrones uh as this is season eight episode six the iron throne it is the season and series finale it is done you will no longer get the very cool Game of Thrones opening sequence uh, on your on your Sunday night television watch, uh, which is a, it's a sad thing. It's a it's a sad sad thing, and uh, we are going to yeah. get into our thoughts on the episode and probably as a, the season as a whole as we kind of wrap things up. Uh, but uh, I do have a bit of a summary here from Wikipedia that I'm going to read to you folks. Once again, spoiler zone. If you have not seen it, <laughs> what have you been doing? Uh, but um, really though, come back to us later uh, after you've um, prepared yourself. <laughs> I find that this is what something I have also had to do. Even though I've seen the episode and I have other favorite podcasts I listen to that I know are going to talk about it, I kind of have to be in the right mood to listen to them. <laughs> before yes like i kind of have to mentally prep so i'm giving everybody that's listening at home the opportunity to mentally prep <laughs> before we get into mm. this um but to summarize uh, after king's landing is nearly destroyed gray worm executes all captured soldiers on Daenerys' orders i'm putting a question mark here because this is what the wikipedia said i saw him kill one um well there was a whole like lineup of them right yeah. you see him kill one and there's like a line of them yeah but there were six of them like it wasn't like there was, well i don't know it, it felt very finite on the on the wikipedia yeah yeah Tyrion finds jamie and cersei dead in the red keep ruins Daenerys rallies the unsullied and dothraki declaim, uh, dis declaring that she will liberate the entire world denouncing Daenerys' uh, tyranny Tyrion resigns as hand and then is imprisoned for treason to wait, await execution fearing Daenerys may kill john and sansa Arya and Tyrion tell john that westeros's fate lies with him john confronts Daenerys but is unable to halt her destructive path and he kills her grieved by her death drogon the dragon melts the iron throne and then carries her body away Tyrion is freed and encourages that future monarchs be chosen by Wetero Westerosi aristocrats rather than the familial succession. Apart from Sansa asserting an independent north, the Wet Westerosi leaders unanimously proclaim Bran Stark as Bran the Broken, ruler of the Six Kingdoms. Bran appoints Tyrion as hand and sentences Jon to the Night's Watch to appease Daenerys' followers. Grey Worm and the Unsullied sail for Noth. Tyrion recognizes the king's small council in Brienne, Bronn, Davos, and Sam to rebuild King's Landing. Sansa is crowned queen in the north. Arya sets sail to explore west of Westeros. And at Castle Black, Jon rejoins Tormund and Ghost and is accompanying the wildlings as they head north of the wall, which is like the last kind of like right into the sunset sort of shot uh, for the series. Mm. Um yeah, I hmm. <laughs> I guess we t technically we can start with the technical stuff to kind of warm up our brains. Uh, Thirteen point six million viewers suppress oh, wow. su suppressing episode five or surpassing, excuse me, episode five, uh, the bells, which is which is last week, uh, making it the making the finale the most watched television episode in HBO history. If you add the additional 5.7 streaming million streaming platforms, it brings the total to 19.3 million people watching that episode. Uh, and I think even I think those numbers are pretty solid now because I think the numbers were coming in Tuesday, and I, I looked these up today. So nearly 20 million people uh, watched the last episode of Game of Thrones. Uh, reviews 
on sub publications have been a bit soft in my opinion uh only i think the new york times was just like that was crap <laughs> They, they they were more eloquent than that, but the, the reviewer at this at the New York Times didn't like it. Uh, but no. Richard uh, Roper, writing for the Chicago Sun Times, said that it was melancholy, bittersweet, twist filled, and at times surprisingly humorous. Overall, was a solid and largely satisfying wrap up to one of the most exciting and enthralling TV series ever. I'm with him on the exciting and enthralling TV series, but I'm not sure what finale he watched because it wasn't the same one that I did. Um, yeah. Hank Struver of the Washington Post wrote that in this episode, the series sailed and it sometimes trotted off to a noble and perhaps anticlimactic end. And I, I brought these in on purpose because anticlimactic, melancholy, bittersweet were words that were used in almost every review that I could see. For whatever reason, these big, um, the big kind of publications were really hesitant to swing a big stick at HBO. I don't know why. <laughs> like it, 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 it's, it's, I realize it's subjective and yes, like at some point you're not going to, you're not going to please everybody. Not everybody is going to be happy with who ends up on the iron throne. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But my grievances at large are less with who ended up on the throne and more how, everything came to be and the end, right? It's, it's... Yeah, I, I said the same thing. A lot of people were like, I'm really disappointed with the outcome and how it happened and who they chose and everything that went down. I'm like, I'm not. Like, an ending is an ending, and at least it ended, and it yeah. ended in a semi-decent way. I'm not happy with I'm not happy with where, where our chess pieces ended up. If you watched the last episode we did together, I talked about chess pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, watched listen to <laughs> ah, i did it i did the thing that i said i would never do i and wasn't I did gonna it. i wasn't gonna i wasn't uh, gonna say anything <laughs> i'm gonna call myself out because that's annoying um yeah so if you listen to the last one we did we talked about chess pieces uh i'm not mad with where they ended up i'm not mad with the pieces that were left on the board i'm mad with the way they were moved around to get there that's mm -hmm. kind of just honestly i don't think bran was the worst choice for king but it just there was a weird disconnect because like earlier in the season or like earlier at the end of last season or something he said something about like i don't really want anymore i don't really want to do anything i don't really want anything i'm barely even human right now i'm just i'm the three-eyed raven um and then when Tyrion was saying like will you will you become king and Tyr like he was like why do you think i came all this way it's like, but you didn't want anything. What? What? What are you saying? It was yeah. just. And it's the only time that uh, Bran smiles in the last two seasons. Yeah. And it's so you I mean, but I mean, you don't smile unless you have feelings. And if you're going to portray this weird, you know, future seeing being as, as unfeeling and wooden, then commit, like don't flip flop. If it's going to mm. be, if he's going to be awkward and annoying, then he's going to be awkward and annoying the whole way through. And, yeah. and it felt, I mean, I don't know if, if some sort of underlying between reading between the lines that they're supposed to be telling us that Bran played the game of Thrones and won. Uh, I didn't, that didn't read very well. Then, then yeah, then you did a piss poor job of communicating that to the viewers. Like I shouldn't have to read between the pages to get that if that's what your mission was. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I still stand by the fact that if they had portrayed Bran as, Still Bran, like still give him a personality, still make him their brother and a family member and someone that's happy to see John or really worried about Sansa or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, someone that mourns Hodor, like just give him something and then yeah. maybe have those visions that he's been having be something that tortures him, that confuses him, that he needs to talk to people about, like give him relationships with people. And then I start to think, oh, wait a minute. That would make sense. If he was depending on people and helping people this whole time, you know, and wanting nothing for himself, right? Then I can understand why Tyrion might say, you know what? You deserve it. Because yeah. in my mind, he's done nothing to deserve it. He literally sits in a chair and does nothing for seasons at a time. And and it, it doesn't really... He communicates information to us the viewer, like that's his whole purpose is to give information that we would not have as either a reader or, you know, in the books or as a viewer, 
that's his purpose. But he doesn't yeah. do anything in the actual context of the world of Westeros, right? He doesn't contribute uh, to, to doing any of, any of the... Like in the, he's bait in the battle of the their time. He's meat yeah. on a stick. Like, it's just like, God. It's, it, it, he, it doesn't feel deserved. Now, from a technical standpoint, breaking the wheel, he can't have children, so there cannot be a family successor. Yeah. Uh, the fact that he can see the past and the future uh, means that as a decision maker, probably pretty good, right? Yep. Uh, the fact that he he wanted to contribute and save the world. He wasn't, he's not an evil being. He was trying to stop the White Walkers. Like, you know, like as little as he contributed, at least he was trying to contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, at all of this goes towards like, well, what was the point of revealing John's true heritage? Like if, if he's, if he's destined for the throne, because if he's on the throne, he knew he was going to be there. He said the line. Then what was the point of revealing John's true heritage. I think it was, I mean, like you said the same thing about like, you know, to Theon, he's like, everything you ever did was to make you be exactly where you are right now. Yeah. Right. So like, I think, I think the thing with Bran is that he's, he's pretty good at not meddling with the timeline. Like, I think he kind of understands that like everything needs to happen in a certain order for things to be as they're meant to be in the future. But it, Again, I don't like how everything played out. Like it yeah. just, it felt, honestly, I, I, I tweeted this and I'm going to reiterate it again. My expectations were so low. I almost liked it. Yeah. I, I, a lot of people said that was really funny too. I was actually really proud of that one, but um, I, I don't know. Yeah. My expectations were so low in, in how this is all going to play out that when it came to the end of it, I was like, well, Okay, that that works, I guess. Yeah. Given, I'm good with that. Given the corner that they painted themselves into this season, mm. like forget that we don't like the corner. We're here. We have to accept the corner, right? We saw yeah. episode five. This is where we landed. Yeah. Uh, I think they did a pretty good job of wrapping things up. I agree. Yeah, right? it wasn't. I mean, it could have been way worse. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, there could have been. It could have been much, much worse. I agree. Yeah. Um, but I feel like a lot of my a lot of the complaints that i have are less about the finale in terms of who ended up where and more about the whole season as to like where and, and how people ended up where they're and where they ended up so mm. like for example i wouldn't necessarily i don't think john would want to be king or like to be king but one of the things that Tyrion says in the episode which is almost directly aimed at the viewers is just like you know no one is going to be happy no one's going to be really happy with what turns out, but no one's going to be really upset either. And that's okay. That means that we're probably a good place to, to end or something along those lines, basically telling the audience, you're not going to get the ending you want, but you're going to be okay with it. <laughs> like it's, it was, yeah. it was pretty straight out there. Um, but like, I don't think that John would want to be or enjoy being King, but I think he would do it out of duty. Right. If, yes. if that was, if that was how it ended and I'd be okay with that, knowing that he's there, but he isn't there because he tried to be there the whole time. He's there because he had to do the right thing at the right time, uh, which is arguably the only thing he has done all season. The one yeah. thing that he did is arguably the biggest thing that anybody has done. Uh, and, uh, I, it was, it was hard to watch. Like you saw it coming. And you know why he's going to meet Daenerys before he stabs her. Uh, yeah. You know it's going to be him. I was hoping, 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 hoping that he wasn't going to be able to do it and that Arya was going to be the one. So mm. my, my, my hope was that Jon was going to be king, that Arya was going to be the one that ended up killing Daenerys, uh, which would make sense for even Arya's end storyline. Like if she killed Daenerys, then she would have to leave. Like she would have to flee. Right. Yeah. And yeah, so she would true. just, she would just like, that's fine. I don't want to, I don't want to hang with you folks anyway. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. See you later. Peace out. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I get, I get also the fact that you don't necessarily want to give the Night King and Daenerys to Arya. It kind of puts everything on her shoulders. Yeah. Uh, as far as, as far as like a care, like the, um, like a, 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 not a linchpin, but like a, a pivot in point of the plot. Like it all hangs on Arya. 
if you do that. Yeah. But at that point, like it made the sense. And they even did that with the way that they filmed it. Like they, they, I mean, I, I understand now that it was probably their uh, uh, um, attempt at misdirection was to make you think that Arya is really mad and she's going to try and kill her because she saw the girl, the mom and child burned in the streets and all this kind of stuff. And really all it does is just make her go talk to John. Um, but the, the death scene with, with Daenerys is like, she is off a rocker. It's a different Daenerys. It's like night and day, including the wardrobe change. Like she literally was in a white outfit three episodes ago. Yeah. She went white, she went maroon, and now it's black. <laughs> yeah. It just, uh, it's the like Darth Vader overnight. And while I don't like the pacing and how fast that happened, again, mm-hmm. we have to kind of say, all right, accept it. We're here. She's done the whole burning everybody thing. Uh, and the way that she talks to John if it had taken her longer to get there, then I would be on board because the way that yeah. the dialogue was, was that like, I have it. I'm so happy, John. All I have to do is free the world. And it was just like, you have lost your marbles. Like she's not angry. She's just like, she's happy at, at her like epiphany. And mm-hmm. like that, that's the scary part. It's like she thinks this is the new normal. And that's where you're just like, oh no. <laughs> like this is Oh not, my dear. Yeah, yeah, like this is this is off the deep end, you know. Like well, because I mean it has like fascist, you know, like all kinds of problems like written all over it, right? I mean it is yeah, it, it's it definitely a reference to, you know, like to all the, the major w- world wars and stuff like that. So I mean and 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 again, like that that kind of stuff is good. It's just that you don't if you look at it in the context context of this season, it's too fast. Like it doesn't make any sense that she's there it, that quickly. Yeah, I agree. Like, th- and that's the, that's the honestly, like with the way everything played out, it's not it's not what played out that is upsetting me. It's the speed at which everything played out. Like mm-hmm. the story, it's still at its core a decent story. We still needed at least two other seasons between that one and this one to get to the point that we got to mm-hmm. because the 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 sudden like go from like the end of season seven to this one and even like within like two episodes she was suddenly batshit crazy mm-hmm. and it was just like if she was going to be going nuts and like and people are like if you you weren't paying attention if you didn't realize that she was gradually going crazy it's like no no like you, you she was always a spitfire i understand that like i think mm-hmm. i said that last episode too mm-hmm. like She's, she's always been hot-headed and she's always been very, very quick to anger. But at the beginning of the season, everyone saw her and John together and she was happy. They were like, they're actually really good together. He balances her out. He chills her out a little bit. And it was like just instantly she's incensed and she's just wild and nuts. And it... I mean, credit to Amelia Clark. She's an amazing actor and she managed to pull it off but it's just the pacing and the editing in which it just made it feel really choppy and disjointed and disconnected. And that's, I think the issue that I'm having with the whole season as, as an, in its entirety, it's just, it's disjointed. Yeah. It and doesn't it, feel like it's stitched together. It's like, all right, let's just slap some things on a board and call it good. Like that's it. It's no, yeah. you gotta, you gotta stitch it together nicely. And it, the editing was not super great this time around either. <laughs> oh my gosh. There was so many, th- I was bored. There was lots of places in, in the finale where I'm just like, why are we still watching this happen? Like, I mean, I, you've, I get that it's the finale and there's kind of like this slower pace and you're trying to like, you know, give everybody their last kind of like right off into the sunset. But it's just like, mm-hmm. for example, you know, since we're talking about Daenerys dying, uh, Drogon senses trouble. Uh, and comes up to see in the open throne room that Daenerys is dead. He, the last person she was alive with is Jon. His her his dagger is in her chest. Uh, yeah, I mean Drogon, like a like a dog, kind of nudges her and realizes that she's she's da- down. That, that was actually really sad. I I felt more for the dragon in that minute than I did for anybody else. Yeah, and I feel like that's a problem yeah. when your dragon has more character arc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah oh but, there's an issue but then but then he has the philosophical no to melt the throne 
because I, mean, I wasn't because mad about script, it because the script says so. Like it's the, yeah, it, it yeah the it, the script said so. But I, I mean, like I also if he's gonna dragons melt, are smart. I well, I guess they are. I guess they're pinpoint yeah. smart because I mean he didn't burn John, which is you thought was going to happen. Uh, yeah. You they, which they made you think was going to happen. He didn't burn anything else. Like I would have been a little bit o- more okay with it if he had burned the entire throne room. Like if John had to run for cover and he brought the whole thing down mm-hmm. uh, in rage, you know, fine, go yeah. for it, you know. And in the process, melting the throne, it is the only thing. And we just watched this dragon lay waste to a city in the last episode. He took down the yeah. Red Keep in like three or four swipes. We watched towers melt with one breath. It took him a yeah. bloody eon to melt this freaking throne. Like it was like, okay, I, I, I get it. He's going to melt it. It's melting. It's melting very slowly. It's still melting. Cut to the next shot. More dragon fire. We're still now, here. To, 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 to play devil's advocate for a second, do you think that it's because the Red Keep was made of stone and this was made of metal? That's what I was thinking initially. Yeah, maybe. But, I but it all wouldn't have taken. Oh, like, I agree with you. It just, it, it was. Yeah. Yeah. It just, well, here's, here's the problem. Because of the way that the season has gone and because of how the writing is, I don't trust them. So now I'm yeah. seeing all these things that they're doing in, in this, like, we don't have the material to fill this episode. We still need it to be 90 minutes or however long it was. I don't remember. Uh, but so we're going to do all this kind of stuff. And it's like any time that there was something that was just too long or repetitive or the dialogue was just like, no, we already did that. Things that you could edit out of the of the ending and it affects absolutely nothing. nothing. Yeah. And then you're just like, that is time and money that you could have spent writing better material and filming more character um, development or, or better um, explanations, you know, mm-hmm. and, and just have these things be just a little bit tighter rather than just like, wow, well, we just, we're going to pump this out because we have to get to these, this last end point um, to go back to what you said about season seven. Uh, I think if I was to armchair quarterback, this, it would be, Remove the storyline from season seven where they go north to get the zombie. Yeah. Right? Because it's dumb. The only thing that happens there that's important is that the Night King gets a dragon. Right? That's the only way. That's the yeah. like, it's the only thing that 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 happens there that is of any consequence. Because they go, they get the zombie, they bring it down to Cersei, and she still doesn't really care. Um, so it was pointless, right? Yeah. Um, but if you if you move that, remove that, and then you put the first three episodes of season eight at the end of season seven. So like the, the battle for Winterfell is done at the end of season seven. I don't know how you get the white, the white walkers across the wall. Maybe they just climb it. I just, I really don't know. Mm. Uh, a, a technicality that it's not in, not really um, key to my point. My point is about pacing because then you'd have yeah. this entire season and don't make this six episodes, make this 10, make this 10 episodes of, the white walkers are dead. How do we deal with Cersei and have the entire season be about that? You might yeah. be able to get us in a satisfying way to where we are now. You know, like instead of six or eight key things happening per episode, it would be two, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. you'd have some time, you know, you'd have, you'd have some pacing and stuff like that. Um, I, there are so I, I, I want to try and balance the conversation out with some cool moments. I really, as I guess ham fist is as it was, it was still a pretty cool moment when Daenerys got off of Drogon and she was walking to the oh, top of the stairs and the dragon spread it. his wings and she has her Maleficent moment. Like, Oh, that was actually so nice. As soon as yeah. I watched it, I was like, okay, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Um, the cinematography in this was amazing, I will say. Yeah. Like, it just, it looked, throughout the whole season, it looked really good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Oh, I loved that minute. Yeah, I don't want to disparage uh, any of the, you know, the, people that have put their blood, sweat and tears into making this entire series or this show or this finale, I'm putting it all on the people that wrote it. My dislike and, and, yeah. and it's all about, it's all about the bones that were laid, not the execution, like not, not the, the technical stuff. Cause other, like everything else was fine. I mean, maybe a couple of water bottles behind some chairs <laughs> that I saw. Uh, but, um, but yeah, at some point I, I kind of get the feeling I'm getting the feeling that a lot of people got pretty fed up 
Uh, and I, yep. no one's saying anything because I think they're just being smart, professional people and want to continue to work. <laughs> and I don't think they're voicing too much. Yeah. But I, I'm curious in five to 10 years when we get the, the real making of HBO's Game of Thrones, you know, um, documentary, I'm very curious to see uh, mm-hmm. what, what people have to say. Um, but no, I, the other shot that I thought was really cool was uh, when John was approaching the throne room uh, where Daenerys was and you couldn't see anything. It just looked like rubble. And then Drogon got out from underneath the snow. Like that was Ooh, wicked. that was cool too. It yeah. was like surprise dragon. <laughs> oh, and, and just so so calmly kind of looking at John, like, oh yeah, it's you. It's cool. you. Hey. It's all okay. good. Yeah, I'm going back Go to sleep ahead, now. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was very, like it was, it was mostly... I would, well, that that moment was mostly cat, but a little bit dog. Um, the, yes. The, the, yeah. When Daenerys died, it was all dog. <laughs> like it's very, yeah. very much, very much golden retriever sort of moment. But but that that moment of like, I'm gonna lift my head up from my nap, make sure that you are who I think you are, and then I'm gonna go back to sleep. That to me was very cat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but like stuff like that, I thought was was still really cool. And as much as I disliked what she was saying in terms of like, oh gosh, Daenerys, you're so wrong. This is all so wrong for you. It was still a very cool speech, like a very cool, powerful moment. Yes. You know, yeah. for her to be at the top of the stairs and addressing the Dothraki and the Unsullied and having still have all those followers, despite the fact um, that, I mean, she's lost the Northmen. She's lost any kind of support from, from the North. All of her local Westerosi cabinet are all just like you nuts see ya um but the unsullied and the the dothraki are still 100 percent loyal the the warriors right like the people that respond to power mm-hmm. are also 100 percent loyal yeah 100 um, percent. anyway i feel like we're kind of dwelling on a lot on on Daenerys and john uh last point that i had is that that death scene with john and cersei i mean it was a really really powerful moment i wish it had been jamie and cersei that is what i wanted for for them was Cersei to die that way like in the arms of the, uh, of Jamie again yeah I, I really would have liked to have Jamie have a, a full circle redemption arc mm-hmm. um well it kind of was a little bit he did he did come full circle where in the end he went back to Cersei but mm. I I would have liked for him to been like listen let's you know not to see her suffer so like just put out of her put her out of her misery also I saw a really hilarious meme when Tyrion was down there and he found if they moved like seven feet to the left, they would have been fine. No, <laughs> yeah. There was no rubble in that area. Yeah. They would have been A OK. Yeah. So uh, yeah, again, hey, that's look, just like set continuity. At least and stuff, the hand but... at least somebody's hand didn't move. Like it, <laughs> at least it wasn't yeah, like, you know, true. they're still alive or one of them is still alive. Like that. Yeah. And also they didn't appear to be under enough rubble to really kill them. Like he, he, he moved four bricks and found both of them. And one final thing before we move on from Daenerys, and it actually has to do more with Drogon than Daenerys, but like they, he picks her up and he flies off with her. And that's the last that we see of her. After all of this, we don't get any kind of like funeral. The, the unsallied don't, there's no like special memory of her. Like it's just, she's just gone. And I feel like that robs the viewers as much as it does the the like the people that followed her mm-hmm. yeah no i i part of me was thinking he was just so like so grieved that he was just like i just gotta i gotta take her away from everything that's bad yeah that's what i was reading into it a little bit but yeah, yeah the whole but there's but there's no precedence for it like we don't know what dragons do when their mothers die like you know like they just they don't have, we've never had that conversation and i just i kind of feel like I also don't know how John got caught. Like the, they, they do this. There was this fade to black after this, this moment. And they essentially fast forward. I don't know how long it's been long enough for Sansa and Arya to get, or Sansa, Arya's already there, but it, it's long enough for all of the Lords and ladies of, of Westeros to be in the dragon pit in, in uh, King's Landing and having a meeting. And it's just like, and it's summertime. It's no longer winter. So it's just yeah. like, so, I mean, and given Tyrion's beard and Jon's beard, they've been in prison for quite a long time. So one, you don't know how Jon got caught. Two, you don't know how he's still alive and why, how Grey Worm didn't just stick him on the spot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, you know, uh, did Jon confess? 
did he say like, I did it. I'm done. I mean, knowing John, he probably, probably did. did. Yeah. <laughs> but, but again, like they don't show that, you know, and you've got, there's enough time in this episode. There's enough long, long shots of nothing where they could have easily put in some, some information. I'm glad they didn't put like a title card up that said like, you know, five months later, uh, or something. Stupid. I almost wish they would have done that, but I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I know, I know why you don't like yeah. that, but like, I almost wish they had have yeah. because, uh, I don't know. I just feel like it would be, it, it would, it, yeah. I don't, passage of time is a big issue in this season. It like, is. Yeah. Like, and, and then I remember in the first couple of seasons, it flowed very, very nicely. And when I went back and watched the whole thing before this episode, before the season came out, sorry. Um, passage of time flowed really, really well. In like the first four or five seasons, and then around season six, it was getting a little bit skewed. Mm-hmm. Well, that's when the book seven, stopped. it was just gone. Yeah, yeah. Mid mid season five, I think, is when the books ran out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the um, the thing that I I really found troublesome about the the Lords Council, so like the one where you've got like Tyrion and Sansa and Arya and all the people around, was like the jokey moments. And the part where like Sansa's uncle, who we haven't seen for like four seasons or something stupid, um, gets up and has this terrible, long, awkward speech about like, I should be king is essentially where he's going. And it, it does nothing. It serves nothing. It's just, it's cannon fodder. I felt like he was just kind of there to be comedy. Because I watched a video on YouTube about like, just kind of the end of Game of Thrones, just to kind of wrap it all up, and and it ties back into previous things. And I guess, um, uh, you know, the he's the oldest Tully brother. I think he's the only Tully brother actually, but he um, was kind of meant to be more of a comedy character. Their their father, he can't shoot the arrow into the into the the boat to set him on fire. He tries oh, to yeah. shoot the arrow like three times, so he's kind of meant to be like a, a jokey comedy character and it's like a, hey we gotta we gotta poke fun at you I, I just i don't know i think what got me the most this whole episode is just all the exposition that Tyrion had i like Tyrion as much as the next person but i was like when did you become the main character mm-hmm. like I, you know he was always he was always a primary character don't get me wrong but like he he was never where the story was centered around he was always a plot driver he was never he was never like a main character. Like he wasn't a, a main player in the game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Um, he was there to be, you know, support while also still, you know, taking a lot of screen time. I, I get like one of my favorite characters, a very, very well-written character. Um, and I know he's George R. R. Martin's favorite character. Um, but um, just like all of the, the speeches that he gave, he gave like two huge monologues, which again, I'm not, I love Peter Dinklage and I love Tyrion, but like it just, it felt like they didn't fit. Yeah. In the, in the episode, you know what I mean? And especially the last one where he was just like, I'm a prisoner and no one should really trust me, but here's what I think. And it just felt really weird. And I wasn't sure about it at all. It just was something. I no, don't know. I mean, it's, 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 he becomes the voice for the writers, not a character, right? Like it becomes the, we have to give some sort of justification for the decision and, and place that we've landed without enough. Basically we haven't done the work in the writing room. So we're putting it all on a character to get us there. And, and, and in a speech, like in, in, like you said, and I mean, in some ways when, when the show started to stopped adapting books and started kind of going on its own, uh, that's when you saw the rise of more um, Tyrion stuff. I don't know how much of that has to do with, you know, contract negotiations and screen time and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure what kind of politics go on mm. behind, but I, I think like you, I agree even in the, in not just, even just not this episode, but just lighter seasons, as much as I like Tyrion and Peter Dinklage, I feel like there's just, it was an awful lot resting on his shoulders. Um, I, I get that he, he would have something to say, but it doesn't like, why would Grey Worm who has this guy imprisoned as a traitor, give him the floor and say, yeah, sure. We'll let you decide who gets to be the King. Like, yeah, that didn't make any sense to me at all. Not to mention that Grey Worm and the Unsullied have got zero stock in it. As far as Westeros goes, cause they're leaving. 
So yeah. Like so, why did they care? Like why did they care? <laughs> like well, because justice. Because the script says justice. Like I, if justice was the biggest thing on your mind, both Tyrion and John would be dead, and you and the Unsullied would on a yeah. be on a boat and sticking your middle finger up at the rest of Westeros. Like it just it it just does not add up. And and which they kind of did anyway, but like I don't know. Well, I think yeah. we just needed some drama, and we needed to have some drama between all of the lords of Westeros because Yara was very Yara Greyjoy was very much like no, like we were aligned with Daenerys Targaryen and Jon betrayed us. Like yeah, she was pretty much the only one who was making a lot of sense in that one. I feel. Um, yeah, I mean loyal, but I mean, loyal as much to a fault, she right? Could be, like but... loyal to yes, a point where it's yeah. like, well, you're being blindly loyal to someone that's dead. So like, it, you're really not moving forward. Yeah. Um, I. Yeah. It, well, that's but that's the Iron Board. Like that's the whole idea that they're. I think they're the only people that are more stubborn than the Starks. Like that's. I think that's their role, mm-hmm. right? Is that it's the the Starks are stubborn with honor, and then the Greyjoys are stubborn without honor. Like that's the kind of like the 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 mold um, from what I can gather. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like I said, I could have done without Tyrion being the one that kind of like explains to the audience why Bran is the right person for the job. I, it, it, realistically, given how much these houses feud and how much all of them want to be on the Iron Throne or would not say no, certainly if it was, you know, an opportunity arose, um, I feel like it should have been amongst them to then voice the people. You know, like, uh, who do you guys want? Well, then six of them are going to say one person and five of them are going to say another person and then you're going to vote and, you know, it ends up being whoever. I think that it is extraordinarily unlikely that uh, as one person is nominated that everybody in the circle says I. Like, no one said no. And Arya didn't even get a vote. Well, because Sansa would technically be the leader of the house. And that's the other thing. Why is yeah, Arya sitting there? <laughs> like, well, I guess Bran yeah. technically would be the leader, but then Arya and Sansa are there. And so like Sansa's like, well, the North is staying free. And she only says that after that she realizes that Bran is going to be king because like it's, it is weird that Arya, Sansa and Bran are all there. Right. Because really only mm. one of them is the head of the household. I mean, if Bran has said it can't be me or it isn't me because I'm the three-eyed raven, then fine. And Sansa is the one that's that's holding that that mantle. Um, but yeah, like Arya being there is, is weird too. I, at first I thought it was strange that Sam was there, but then I realized that with his brother and father dead, he's the, um, he's the head of the Tarly lands. Yes, yes. And Gendry wasn't even there. Was he? I don't remember. If he was, he didn't say anything. I don't. I think he was there. Pretty sure he was uh, there. Was he there? He must have been. I don't remember. What, Brienne was there too. Brienne was there too, but I think she's because she's. Well, no, wait a minute. She's she's also she's also um, not royalty, but she's from a house. Like she's um. She's from a house, yeah. Well, she's from Tarth. Tarth, yeah. So maybe maybe she represents Tarth. But is that one of the maybe. seven kingdoms? Like this is this is where. I've been so caught up in the folly of the character development this season that I have not really refreshed yeah. my, all of my notes have to do with like character story arcs falling flat, not like the yeah, going not back, houses and yeah, not going back to the houses and remembering where everybody lives and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I know that she's from a noble house. I don't think she's from, so like each kingdom of Westeros has one leading house and then there's other noble houses beneath it. Right. So, like, for example, the Riverlands, t- the house Tully would be the noble house, like the, the presiding house over that area. But House Frey is a noble house as well, just under the Tully name. Right. Same, right? same with Kind of like how, like, like the, the Mormon under the Starks. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, or anything like that. So, so I think she's from a noble house in the Stormlands. Um which is where the Baratheons would preside over. Right, right. She's part of the Kingsguard. Like, she's a gold cloak now. Yeah. Which, I mean, which is great. Yeah. Which is a, fi- it's a fitting spot for her to land. Like, that's one of the, he's, she's one of the few characters that where she lands, I'm just like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm happy with her. As far as, like, all of my favorite female characters lie, which were Brienne and Sansa, and even Arya to an extent, uh, I'm happy with where they landed. I'm really happy that Brienne is a gold cloak. I'm really happy that she, you know, she's 
you know, recognized as someone strong and powerful and not ridiculed for being a lady knight. Uh, I'm just happy that Sansa was queen. I just wanted Sansa to be queen. That's all I wanted. And she was. That's all that matters to me. And I was like, you know what? I can uh, be good and happy about this. Oh, and John pets pet ghost. That's I, that was the only thing that made me cheer in the whole show. Like I was watching with my roommate and my friend uh, Becca. And we were like, as soon as we heard like the whine of the dog, we're like, oh, pet that dog. You better pet that dog. You pet the dog. All right, good. We can all go home. This is great. Yeah. That's all that we cared about. Uh, and, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, people yeah. have their speculations about that being added in in the last you know week or two where it was such a big stink you know what even if it is i don't care i don't think it's possible i think this was all shot months and months and months ago like i i I don't think that it was but if it wasn't like if if that was in this episode and not in the other episode on purpose like i kind of feel like they trolled them like i kind of feel like they trolled the internet and when the internet lost their mind over john not petting that dog in episode four then somebody somewhere was twiddling their thumbs going like, <laughs> you know, like, There's look, way, look yeah. at the puppets dance. Like, it's like, Oh God. Yeah. You know, like, well, and that's the kind of thing. Like it, if you remove the, the scene from episode four, where John doesn't pet ghost and we don't know that ghost is even alive. Can you imagine the emotional response to not knowing from episode three to episode six, if ghost was alive. And then when John finally gets to the mm. wall, there's ghost saying all right let's go for a run like let's where are we going today man yeah and like that that is way more poignant and important and uh gives a a, a more of a a landing to john you know in the north uh, above the wall than than having the whole thing be like again like people were talking about the starbucks cup and john not petting ghost in that episode as opposed to how bad the writing was and here people yeah. are talking more about the writing because it's the end of the show but there's an awful lot of noise about the water bottles and john petting the dog and it's just like guys, yeah you're missing and the, the ink the ink in the oh, book that's oh not dry when God. Rib... yeah yeah just yeah. people losing their absolute minds about it yeah well and it they'll, and then what's funny about the ink in the book is that people are, are are focused on it and it also serves as like this kind of underlying message is like the whole show is trying to get out of dodge so fast that the writing is suffering and it's the same thing as closing the book when the ink is still wet like it's just yeah D and D are like putting the book on the uh, shelf and uh-huh. the whole internet's like no <laughs> it's, it's not done yet uh, uh. It's, it's yeah um as far as like things like the King's Council and having Davos and Ar- uh, not Arya, Davos and Brienne and uh, Sam and everybody, it all it all makes sense. Like it, it, it's the right people; they're in the right houses. Uh, mm-hmm. Brand again, Brand as king is weird. Uh, Tyrion as hand makes sense. Um, wasn't was he not was he not a hand before? Was he not on the council before? I feel like he was on he the was castle. so he was he was filling in for Tywin so Tywin when Joffrey was crowned king after Robert right. was killed um was filling in as hand of the king for Tywin right and actually did a lot of really good things while he was hand um and then was immediately thrust aside after the battle of Blackwater right when his dad showed up um right. that's kind of when all that went down but right. um so he's no stranger to it, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, in this yeah. they painted as punishment. Like they, he doesn't want it, so they they give it to him as as he doesn't quote, want it. But punishment. like, I think at this point, like everyone's doing it for duty. Mm-hmm. At this point, like again, even Bran doesn't want. Even Sansa said, like Bran doesn't want it. I don't think Bran ever did really did want it. But he like that was the first thing my like my roommate said too is like when Tyrion was like Bran, Bran the Broken. First of all. Brand the Broken, really, that's kind of a rude name. But mm-hmm. second of all, she was just like, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want anything. What? And she was really confused. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm glad that someone's on the throne. I'm glad it's someone who's not power hungry. I'm glad it's someone who's not, you know, in the grand scheme of things, insane. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of glad it's not John, though, either. Like, as much as that would have been in a perfect world. John and Daenerys would have been married and ruled world together despite the incestual weirdness of their relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, they would have, it would have kind of been a light, nice and happy and even perfect world. Uh, if this is what we're going to get with someone who is relatively sane, 
and not bonkers and is pretty well going to know what's going to happen. Um, I'm okay with that. Sansa got her crown. Yeah. That's, no, that, that, Sansa... was, that, that was my one box checked is like, if the, what will make me super happy? Sansa's queen. Great. I got that. That's at that point, by the end of this, I was like, Sansa's the only person I care about a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I liked with it. I also did like where John landed. Like if he wasn't going to be king, then having him yeah. adventure north of the wall makes sense. What I didn't like is him being banished to the Night's Watch. Because, well, one, we don't need the Night's Watch because the Night King's dead. Mm. So what's the point of that? Um, and then two, it it salts the goodbyes from John and Sansa and Arya and Bran. Uh, like at the dock there mm-hmm. when he's getting into the dinghy, when he's being taken away. It, it doesn't make any sense. Like if you, if you can somehow convince, like everybody is supposed to be giving and everybody like uh, giving leeway. Right. But the only people yeah. that don't, or the only person that doesn't is gray worm. When, if you want to kind of give him even like a little bit of, uh, hope for a likable character, uh, is that you have, if he concedes to be like, you know, fine we'll we'll set everybody free if you decide to break the wheel that my you know my queen set out to do um if they free john and john decides to go north of his own accord then that gives a lot mm. more validity to and happiness to his ending even though you're not going to get a smile out of kit harrington <laughs> as john right like just, it, you know no. ha- ha- having john and aria say goodbye when she can smirk at him and say what's west of westeros and he's like i don't know she's like huh and she kind of skips off you know that's a fun ending in character to their relationship instead of this even though he did the right thing and he won and he saved everybody he's still being punished and it just it just doesn't feel like it was needed because he's already had to stab the woman he loves like it's not like it's penance he's already had to pay that um yeah. Yeah. Like I just, I, it's these little things that I feel are so obvious to me. And I'm not a writer. I'm not an HBO producer. Like I, you know, I, I'm not saying that I could be, but it just feels like when these things are so obvious to someone who I consider like myself to be like an average viewer, like an average person watching this show, it kind of makes you think like, well, the brilliant minds behind the show, how come you didn't think of this? You know, and it, it's, it's, you know, it feels weird. I I I like the yeah, idea. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I like the idea of um, John and Daenerys ruling together, like you said, and like in the in the really cool, perfect kind of like balanced world. Um, but then, yeah, uh, at that point, I guess Tyrion has to be hand, right? But I always thought yeah. that Bran would make an excellent hand because I thought if John was somehow king, and if Daenerys still died, whether it was from Arya or whether she just died in battle or something. If Jon was ended up king, then Bran being Hand would also very be very cool, right? In a and then make a lot of logistic sense, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's yeah, yeah. But I mean the way, but the way that they landed it, like it just if they're gonna go with Bran, like the way that they gave the endings, they could have just they could have just spun it a little bit different. I also really felt like Arya was sailing off into the sunset cough cough spinoff series. Like it just it didn't. <laughs> It's like yeah, West yeah, of Westeros no, has felt n- very like never been mentioned until just now. <laughs> no, actually, that's not true. Oh, is it? Um, she mentioned it. No, yeah, she mentioned it in um when she was in Bravos and she was staying with that lady, uh, who was the actor after she got stabbed by the wave. Oh, okay. So, so remember when she was doing that training and she was supposed to she was supposed to kill this actress, mm-hmm. but she didn't. Uh, and then the the other like faceless person who was like helping her train while she was blind, uh, like tra- was tracking her down. Yep. Um, and they got into that fight. And at the end of the fight, like you know, Arya was stabbed a few times. The uh, the candle, and then kills the waif. Then she comes back to this actress, uh, and while she's patching her up, she um, she's talking about it. She's like, well, I'm from Westeros. What's west of Westeros? So it was, it was mentioned oh, okay. one time. All right. It's so been, it was. It's, it's but, been a long time. But it's been I've a while. It. Yeah. And that hasn't been part of her character arc in a long time. So. Mm. Interesting. 
for final thoughts, are you interested in reading the books now that we've seen this ending on HBO? Yeah, actually, I am. Um, I know that the characters all look very different in the book, so I think that's going to be difficult for me to get my brain around. Um, apparently, characters are easy to distinguish between in the books because they're all color-coded. Um, according to, to Bethley, like everyone who's wearing purple is from a particular house. Everyone who's wearing a certain other color is from a particular house. Yeah, he goes into great descriptions about meals, banners... You know, but in how's I mean, but I mean, like the chapters are always told from the perspective of a certain person. So like instead of chapter yes. one or two, you get like, you know, Arya or you get Sansa or whatever. So you always know kind yes. of like who whose eyes you're seeing the, the story through. Um, mm-hmm. And then and then if it's a new character, then they usually go through the the the, um, the ropes of like explaining what house they're from and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, w- I would really like to because like, there's a lot of detail. George R. R. Martin has said that his ending would not be that different than what he is t- what he is kind of put forth in the show. Yeah. So, so in this in the books, Brand very. I don't imagine that HBO would be any different if they asked him and he said, "Look, look, this is who I'm planning to put on the throne," unless he's pulling a fast one on them, uh, or he changes. Yeah, that'd his, be kind of amazing, honestly. Yeah, or if he changes his mind. Uh, then, then I, I think the people that are really solid fans of the show and the books are going to want to read the books. Cause the one thing that you're going to get in the books that you're not going to get in the show is the proper pacing, right? If anything, the books are going to be a little bit too yeah. long. Um, uh, but like, yeah, he, he, if Daenerys is going to descend into madness, then you're going to get the proper the proper the the proper spin out right in in the books you're gonna get the mm-hmm. inner you're gonna get the inner monologue that you don't get in in the show right you're gonna get uh you're gonna get some other things that they might just not have had time for um yeah I am curious to know whether Bran is the one that that Martin puts on the throne um. I think my biggest yeah, beef with yeah, Bran on the, I think my biggest beef with Bran on the show is that I don't remember him as the three-eyed raven in in the books being this out of it. I I don't remember whether that even happened in the books. Like it's it's been so long since I've read the books and the show has been something that I've been so steeped in for the last few years that it all starts to get foggy, right as to what happened when and where. Uh but if I don't see Bran being this wooden in the books. If he's meant to be on the throne, then I feel like we're going to get more of a perspective, right? Because Bran's one of the characters. Yeah, well, when, Bran's one of the characters in the books that you see the story through. And if it's if he's an unfeeling wooden box, then that's a boring chapter, <laughs> right? It's just yeah. No, I agree. It might as well be in point form. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Um, I don't know. It's I don't know if it's just like. The, yeah, the writing they did for the show mm-hmm. or or not at this point. I, at this point, I'm chalking it up to the show. Um, I'm chalking up the fact that Bo- Bran was boring as hell because of the show. That's what I'm chalking it up to. Yeah, I'm. I w- I'm interested to see how the books turn out. I think I will probably pick up the books and read them. My brother has the whole set, uh, so I should just borrow them from him and see how they work and and how they how they play out. I remember, and, um, I remember the, I remember being riveted right up through the Red Wedding in the books. And I think that's book three. Uh, book four. Oh, oh you read them. I didn't realize you'd read them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I had read them all before the series started. Um, I think, a, uh, did I read them all before? I think I might have been still reading some of the later books. Well, one of the books came out while the series was going or just before. Uh, that was book five. Um, and that is not my favorite it is the largest and the most confusing because it's just like uh, i think there was something to do with the publishing where books four and five were supposed to be one book but it was too long and so the publisher made him split it up oh and so he split it up in a way that book four was all the characters you know and book five was all the characters you don't 
So you go into book five thinking, yeah, Game of Thrones. Can't wait to see what happens with everybody. And you get nothing because it's all new people. And you're just like, what is this? And it's really confusing. But I also remember quite a lot about Davos in book five. And of course, he's one of my favorite characters in the show. Uh, and yeah. becomes a good character in the book too. But like he's he's so much more likable when he's interacting with like, you know, John or, you know, other people that, you know, Um so yeah, I just I've I've definitely read the books. Um, I, there are also very good audio books. Um, unfortunately, the actor that that read them has yeah, passed away. Yeah, I would love to. I'd love to like get an Audible subscription or something and, and mm -hmm. do the audio book. I think. Yeah, they're 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 worth worth listening to for sure. Um, very very well, very very well read. Uh, it actually kind of makes me want to read them <laughs> again. Yeah, like it kind of makes me want to read them again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely interested in the books. I. I mean, it's going to be different showrunners, so I would be curious about a, a, a spinoff series, you know, Pirate Aria, or there's already a, a series of set a thousand years before the current events uh, in Game of Thrones, where they're talking about like the early age of, of Westeros and, and all that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I like fantasy stuff. I mean, HBO does good quality produced content. So, you know, I, I feel in part of like part of me feels bad because I've been slamming the show uh, almost all season. And I want to be careful that I'm not disparaging the entire season or series. Like, yeah. Oh it, no. I love the series. Yeah, I love the series a lot. Me too. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so disappointed with how they've wrapped up this season and, and how I felt about the last two episodes in particular or three uh, is that I've just, I've, been in love with the show for so long and it's just i feel like they really have let me down like i feel yeah. disappointed you know in, yeah me too in, in the writing and in in the way that they landed it where like they had so much potential like it was this huge huge home run and it was just like you just it's going over the wall it's almost over the wall and then the ball hits the top of the wall and trickles back into the infield and you're just like really yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, no, it, I felt the exact same way. Yeah. Like, I felt very, not cheated, but, you know, I was kind of just like, oh, oh really? okay, yeah. really? All yeah, right, cause, I guess. Because there's been moments in this show where stuff happens and you're just kind of like, what? What just happened? And you're just like, excited and you're just like, oh my God, I can't wait for next season. Like, I've had yeah. those moments with this show and I didn't even have a twinkle of like, sadness or feels in this episode like i was not sad that it was over because it ended and i was just like well that's that <laughs> like it was yeah honestly by like by like episode four i think after after episode four i was like just let it die mm -hmm. just put it out of its misery already thank god there's only two episodes left like that's literally <laughs> what i was thinking and that's not something i want to think about that no, show because exactly. it's, it's like i will say it's been it's one of the few shows I think that has been very, very globally well received from everybody, mm -hmm. um, and uh, has had people tuning in at airtime to watch. That doesn't happen anymore. Mm -mm. People will often just like record things, or they'll watch it on Netflix or something. This is the only show that I can think of that I have actively tuned in to every single week to turn on to watch. Uh, when I can, right? Mm -hmm. This this series or this season, I made sure I did because I wasn't working. Uh, I didn't have to work early the next day, so like I was, I was on it. But at the, I got to the point where it's like I'm not excited to watch anymore. I just need to see what happens, and so it see how much deeper in the hole they can bury this thing. Um, <laughs> that's kind of what it felt like. It's like, like but watching I mean, a train wreck, sort of. It is. You just can't look away. Yeah. Um, but no, like I'm, you know, to to at least finish up my end of things i congratulations to the cast and crew because they all did you know a really really great job with with the with the script that they were given and the work that they've done over the eight years mm -hmm. is fantastic um i'm really i'm actually really disappointed with all the fans who are calling like you know doing a petition to remake the last season and even like sophie turner is like yo like that's really disrespectful to everyone who worked on the show, not just the writers, but everyone. Mm -hmm. and it was like like sometimes like 50 days worth of night shoots in some instances. Like I know like the Battle of Winterfell was all night shoots. The yeah. whole thing was all yeah. night shoots. Um, and that's hard work. Like if you've never worked on a film set, doing a night shoot is very, very exhausting. And it's a lot of work and you just, you, 
it, it drains a lot of life out of you. But if you're making something that you, you know, hopefully enjoy, it's kind of worth it. But if, you know, if people don't like it, they don't like it. Like not everyone's going to like it you put out there. And that's yeah. just the fact of it. But to, to call for a whole reshoot of it, I think is really disrespectful. Just kind of let it be, let it go. Well, that's, that's enjoy just, the good moments. That's just a symptom of the internet though. Like that's just yeah. the expectant, um, little shits <laughs> that think yeah. the world revol revolves around them. I mean, and I, yeah. I mean, I, I know that I've been crapping on, you know, the writing, you know, or we have really, you know, on, on the Sizzle Cafe f for the season, but, I would never think to start a petition to redo it. Like it's, I don't no, have, I don't have no. the gall to think that I deserve another season. I got what I got. <laughs> like it's just, no. and there's lots yeah. of people out there. Like as I, I didn't, it was, the dislike was more pervasive, but there were some people that were just like, that was great. I'm what a great ending. He petted the dog and I'm happy. And it's like, so it worked for some people, you know, like it just, I, yeah. it, I, I don't know if those people, I think it's just that those people, when you've got 20 million people that are tuning in for the finale, uh, or 19.3, then you're going to, the people that are as into it as you and I are, are not the majority. Like everybody's into it. Everybody yeah. likes the show, but they're not tearing it apart. They're not, you know, they've not read the books three times. No, that's not the majority of that 20 million people. They're in yeah. there and they're loud, Right. But that's that's not the majority. The majority of just like this is a wicked show that I tune into on HBO every Sunday night, and it's ending tonight, so I'm gonna watch. Like it's not they're not as invested in it. Um, and I think one thing that's important to to lay at the feet. Uh, it started with the Lord of the Rings in 2000, uh, but between Peter Jackson's trilogy and this series, fantasy uh, genre is cool again yeah like it like which deep... i'm personally really excited about yeah. like i i'm really happy that that's a thing mm -hmm. yeah i mean like peter jackson's world was like orcs and monsters and all kinds of crazy shit and then oh, well that's shape you know it's tolkien it's not peter jackson's world but like those movies made like beasts and magic and wizards and all that kind of stuff in there and then game of mm -hmm. thrones is more of that hardcore like fantasy and like in dragons are just a thought like they used to exist it's mostly just politics and people in armor like it's not there's not a lot of magic going on but then as the series kind of spun up there starts to be more and more kind of like really cool stuff happening but it was all grounded in for the most part reality like even yes. the white walkers it are felt... pretty believable right yeah like they have like a realistic you know beginning they have a reason for being there mm -hmm. um well, like or if a better so example like, would be the dragons. The dragons are animals; they're not magical. Yeah, like they don't yeah. they don't appear out of a puff of smoke. Like it was an egg, and it I mean it, it has it has some weird ethereal properties, but it's 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 a dragon. Like we can't they can't explain everything, but when it's there mm -hmm. and it's a thing in the world, it can die. Like it bleeds, it has, you know, yeah. it does, it doesn't just like magically float in the air. It has to flap. Like th there's, there's a lot of really yeah. grounded kind of fantasy, um, elements in Game of Thrones. And I think, I think between that and the quality of, of the politics and the interesting characters and the fact that everybody was gray, there wasn't like a hero and a bad guy. It was like, there's a lot of people that do yeah. a lot of bad things. Uh, and people that do a lot of good things and sometimes it's the same person. I feel like that really kind of made it relatable in a way that made the fantasy genre, um, super cool. I don't know if anybody's done the research on this, but I feel like there's a kind of a correlation between the current rise in popularity of D and D and game of Thrones being as popular as it was for the last eight years. I would definitely say so. I mean, I think in order, in order to, because I was always really into Game of Thrones, and I think in order to get more fantasy in my life, like more of that medieval fantasy, mm -hmm. um, D and D kind of filled that void when D, like Game of Thrones was not there, mm -hmm. yeah. right? But it's more of like a wacky fun for me. But it's well, still yeah. But but there know. are people that are very serious about their D and D too. Yes, it's true. Yeah. 
Well, I'm going to say that that's going to be it uh, for this episode of the Citadel Cafe. If you want to see links to the stuff that we talked about, you can go to thecitadelcafe.com. Music for the show was composed by Kevin McLeod, as I mentioned at the top. Uh, you can email us and let, let us know what you thought about the finale of Game of Thrones or the season at large, whatever you'd like, at thecitadelcafe at gmail.com. Subscribe on iTunes, Android, Stitcher, and Spotify. And of course, spread the show via word of mouth, poking a friend in the arm and saying, hey, this is a really cool podcast. You should check it out. Uh, it's always really helpful. We are going to be talking about all kinds of stuff in the future. It's not just a Game of Thrones show. Uh, we switch over when the show's on, but we go back to talking about whatever we're into, whether it's uh, the latest superhero movie. Uh, I know a couple weeks ago, uh, Lou was really into uh, Detective Pikachu. <laughs> so we've talked about stuff like that. It's if it's so good yeah if it's if it's nerdy we're, we're probably going to talk about it uh on on this show and if you'd like to help us out you can go to patreon.com slash the citadel cafe that is where you can become a member join our discord contribute to the community and help make this show possible my name is joel duggan everything that i am doing online is at joelduggan.com i'm going to point you towards twitch.tv slash joel duggan as the place to find my online content right now i do a lot of live stuff there it's some drawing some some minecraft some other video games and there's a really really fun warm community to hang out with uh, and chat with there live on the channel so check that out over on twitch megan thanks so much for taking the time to hang out and talk game of thrones and get this all off of our chest <laughs> Oh, naturally. Like, I mean, like, I don't think there's anyone I'd rather talk about it than with you. So, no. Where can people yeah, go no. to find you <laughs> online? People can find me online on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at O Megan Townsend. And if you'd like to follow my personal project, The Heir of Keldenan, that's also on Instagram too. You've been listening to the Citadel Cafe, where we are fast, easy, and cheap, but you can only pick two. Two, 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 two,